exciting to see where this goes. Before we do anything else, I want to have uh, Kyra open with prayer, and we'll, we'll um, get on with the schedule. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you especially for this weather. Lord, we've been praying for good weather, and we just give all honor and glory to you for that. Lord, we ask that you protect us, that you keep everybody safe, all the horses safe. Lord, we pray that you'll give us all wisdom and discernment, and we just pray also that you'll help us all have a fun time. In Jesus' name, amen. That's a cool thing. I've always thought that was the coolest thing. Do you want to get a horse to tie tail knot? And I was talking with JoLynn, and neither one of us have tied tail knots in so long that we kind of all forgot. So <laughs> we're going to go through this and see if we can get at least one tied up. And then what I did is on this, because there's pictures that you can look at, I just put the websites of all the pictures that are step by step by step. So you guys can experiment with that by looking at the website and printing off those pages if you want to. Once you do it, it's like any other knot. It's like braiding, you just do it. It's not hard to remember, but if you haven't done it for five or 10 years, you forget. I forgot. Buckaroos. Well, it comes from the, the vaqueros, okay. right? And the vaqueros came from the war horses. So they wanted Method to tie their horse's tail up so it didn't get caught in a battle, oh. in a fight, a sword fight, a battle, hand-to-hand um, -hand combat. So they would tie it up. It's become a traditional style trend, I guess, you know, in later years. It doesn't have any practical purpose. But some of the guys really, you go to these buckaroo gatherings and every horse you see will have a knot in its tail. This is Mitch's horse. My horse has been lame, and so Mitch has been letting me play with his horse a bit. Is it not the same as the square knot that we use on the scarf? No, it's not. Oh, you it can does. do that one. Oh, I thought that's what it looked like. It, yeah. You can do that yeah. one. Grandma, can I have one more water bottle? That comes. I gave mine a bath. <laughs> mine mine were like, so like they've been yeah. dipped in mud. Yeah. Just yeah, don't but. pat mine. <laughs> yeah. he looks like, no, yeah, don't pat him. So you can't tell he's dirty. Don't pat into mine either. They might yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. mind you touch the duck. Well, he looks like pig pen. I did back in the fall. Yeah, my nickname. You know, a lot of times um, we travel with a leaf blower, and we'll just oh. you know, blow them off. That's a good idea. Huh. I'd have tried that instead of the vacuum. Oh, that makes, makes a good piece of amazing. Cool. Cool. It's a vacuum. It <laughs> takes a long time. <laughs> This was the, uh, what were we going to do again? Oh. <laughs> oh. And then I, I talked to her on the phone last week. I go, I go, do you remember? She goes, no. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. But it looks to me like you tie it not one way and then you just tie it the other way. No. Uh-oh. You have to come around behind, and we're getting confused on the around behind part. We have to find a way to walk. Right. So, partly the number one thing that I want to talk about today is the delivery of energy to your horse and how you do it and how much more effective you can be as a handler with your horse from the ground if you start recognizing how you can deliver energy to your horse and how you can use it. Okay, so the system I use, everything I do from the ground is geared to go into the saddle with me. Okay, I do nothing on the ground that's not going up there. Okay, it's a waste of time, really. 
and I actually have I have only one move that I use when I look at the hip and I want them to move the hip. That can't transfer into the saddle with me too much. It can a little bit, but not as much as most of it does. So you have energy coming from the center of your chest. That's the focal point. Okay. So right now I'm standing here looking at you ladies and you guys are free, feeling this direct energy. Okay, because I'm focusing and concentrating on you two right here. Okay, everybody else does not feel that. They're aware of it. But if I turn my attention over here to Twink, all of a sudden she feels that energy. Okay, and you guys feel the release of the energy. Does that make sense? Okay. If th this is very directional. If you guys can't hear me, if I keep turning, raise your hands and throw a rock at me or something so I can turn back to you so you can hear me. Okay. So, big point. Okay. We also have energy coming out of our shoulders. Okay. At an angle to, like our arms. Okay. So even though I can turn over here, if you guys are aware of it, you can feel a little bit right here, okay? Okay. And the same thing, when I turn this way, it's kind of the same thing. You guys kind of feel that a little bit right there. So you can really be effective with your horses if you understand that energy, okay? Energy is any kind of motion or it can be even a lot more subtler than that, okay? I can raise the energy in my body very subtly and my horse can feel it, okay? So I do what's called connecting, disconnecting from my horse. Right now, we're disconnected, okay? I've told him, just stand there. Whatever I do, I can flop around, I can wave around like this. It doesn't mean anything to you. Does that make sense? Okay, it's, it, this is a really, really important point because I see so many horses that are dull because they don't understand how to connect. The handlers don't understand how to connect and disconnect from their horses. Okay, you can be in negative or you can be engaged or you can be in neutral or you can put it into drive. All the same thing, but hello, pay attention. Okay, there's another point right there. He was looking over there. Okay, even though we're in neutral, that does not mean go away. Okay, he can go, hello. You see that he saw me come back and say, and he said, oh, sorry. Okay, so that's really important. That point right there is really important. If they ignore you, they're in charge, and they think they're running the show. Okay, if they're not focusing on me, they're in charge. Okay, so it's really important. And I have a simple rule for that. He gets three seconds. He gets to go look for three seconds. And at the end of three seconds, and I, visit, I count in my mind, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, hello. Okay. Or anything. Touch them with your aid. Touch them with, stomp the ground. Do something that will cause them to come back to you. Okay, and if you follow that rule firmly, pretty soon they're going to be standing there, and you watch them. Within, I can guarantee you within an hour, if you're consistent with this, they'll go look at something and they'll come back and see what you think about it. Okay, so that's a very important thing. Energy has different forms, as we all know. I can go in a slow walk, and my horse will go in a slow walk. If I speed up, my horse should speed up, correct? Okay, he should follow my energy. Okay. A lot of different, what I call aids, tools, that we can use to work our horses with. Firm believer in them, myself. I know they're awkward. I know they're hard to learn to use. It's just like us being, these become my legs. Okay, this is my legs. And how I deliver my energy to my horse is, is and is not. It's not always my, I can bring my energy in front of my horse with my aid. And I, I can't take my leg up there, so, but <laughs> they learn to use the energy. And when I deliver it where my legs are going to sit on the horse, they become accustomed to that. So that when I get on my horse, they're used to that energy. Okay. A lot of different energies that we can use. And I just brought these up today. This is the blunt, very strong energy. Okay very firm in its direction.
there's not a lot of um, motion energy created by this one, some, but versus this one, there's a huge difference. Okay, both can be very effective for what you're using. Okay, if you have a horse that's a little bit overreactive, this will blow him up. Okay, a horse that's a little overreactive, this will allow him to be calmer and more receptive to what you're asking. Okay, if you've got a horse that's dull and not mindful, this can say, hey, pay attention. Okay, energy is also noise. You can hear the noise that I created with it. Okay, be careful about that. One of my rules is I never pop my whip at my horses, and I never chase my horses with the flag. Okay, because I don't want that to transfer into normal life reality. If that paper plate comes across the parking lot and blows underneath my horse, I want him to watch it go under there. I don't want him to think motion means movement. Does that make sense? Okay, so the flag to me is a desensitizing tool. Okay. Another thought for you real quickly that just comes to my mind. What happens at a standstill with a horse means nothing at a walk. What happens at a walk means nothing at a trot. What happens at a trot means nothing at a lope. So we all know we got to do the front, the back, the left, and the right, correct? We also have to do all the gates. Standstill, walk, trot, lope. a little bit of a lash on it, means a lot to a horse. Be careful. I don't want my horse to move off of that. I want him also to be desensitized to it. Okay, I don't want this thing to make him move. Okay, so when I come up with my bridle rein and it's going like this, he's going, ah! Okay, I want him to be accustomed to that and be okay with it. So what do you use to get your horse to move? Just the energy when you bring it up in your body? I try, yes, absolutely, from the groundwork. Okay, so part of the reason I call these aids is they aid me to get where I want to go. I don't want to be packing these the rest of my life. <laughs> okay, it becomes awkward. I want to be able to work on a signal. This just helps me to get him to read my hands, what I'm doing here, and that's where I'm going next, and, and the movement of my body. Okay, these are basically enforcement. Okay, he's 1,200 pounds and I need something to convince him that I, it doesn't mean I'm going to beat him because I've cautioned you, be careful or you can overdo it. Okay, but it's not that I won't use this if I need to, you know, get in there and say, hey, you're not paying attention, I need you to watch, I will create some energy, but I'm not going to consistently do that to where that means he needs to move. Okay, that's only enforcement. <clears throat> Hey, come down off of your plateau up here and come back down here with me. So, what you choose to use to help with you just that question. So, how effective is that? Okay, very good. If I get you guys to understand anything else, this right here is probably the biggest thing. Okay. So I'm going to send my horse forward. I'm going to send him in a circle out here. Okay. So, this rein, this lead rope, becomes my contact, just like the rein. Okay, does everybody understand contact with the bridle rein? You take the rein, you reach for contact with the bridle. It doesn't mean you go, err. You're asking him to go to find out where your hands are at. That's it. He's going to contact so that we can have a communication together. Okay, so I have very little communication right here because I have very little contact, very little field to you. Okay, so just like when we're on the back, if I want my horse to go to contact, which is seek the bridle and be soft for me, I have to teach him to do that. So here I want him to teach him to do the same thing. So I'm going to send him in the circle. The length of this lead rope tells him, hello, where I would like him to go. His job is to go to the contact of the lead rope. It doesn't mean he's going to go out there and pull on me. It just means he's going to find that soft feel out at the end of the leader. That's his job. Okay. That's the first thing he has to do. So if I'm going out on the circle, what most horses tend to do is take that path right there. Okay. His job is to go to that contact, so he needs to go out there. Okay. Does that make sense? First step. 
Here's what happens with most people when they send him out on that circle. Let's go. Okay, guess where he's going? Right where I don't want him to go. And I just told him to go. Does that make sense? Okay. So, visualize this and I teach everybody, point your finger. I'm saying you need to go over there. Okay. I'm saying that's where I would like you to go. Make sense? Okay. So I'm sending him over there. Not pulling him over there. He's going. Okay, I'm gonna come around here. The energy of this stick is going right where my legs are going to be. Okay, it's driving my horse. He's beginning to understand what that means. Okay, so that's why I use it that way. Okay. I can see some of you nodding, and so what I like Mitch to demonstrate right now. I've given the signal, I never repeat it, my hand drops, and I enforce it with the stick at the guard. If I need to push him back out, it's there to do that. Okay, so he's walking a little bit hip out right here. But it's not bad. He's, a, he's pretty round, he's soft on the lead rope. Now watch when I change the stick to the hip. See how that hip starts stepping out? And that's just a really good demonstration of where you place that energy is going to affect the body part that you place it at. If I want his hip to step out, then I can do that very effectively. This horse. First thing I do, if you don't have a stick or an aid, I'm going to switch my aid and my rope and I'm going to continue forward. Okay, I'm not going to allow hello, you need to wake up. I'm not going to allow him to watch the change of the stick and the aid and anticipate the turn. Okay, he has to wait for me to tell him how to turn. Okay, so once I and I, I'll go ahead and turn from here since we're stopped and I can tell him. I'm going to step back Pull him to me in forward motion, and when his head crosses, I'm going to step back in and push the shoulder back out on the line. Okay, and I'll do this in forward motion. I'm going to change my stick. Hey, that's the trouble with the soft-minded horse. That's okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Some of us are soft-minded. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to step back, catch the front, pull him to me, step back in. Push the shoulder out and put him into forward motion. Now, would you do that even if you were on a longer line? Yeah. Would you step back no yes, matter what? I would. Distance. Okay. Now watch it change. See how much closer he's come to me? Okay. The natural instinct in this horse, he just realized why I let him into my personal space. I'm training him to come into my personal space. Um, what? Can everybody hear me now? So everybody looks like they're doing good with their horses. <laughs>
his own space. Now the thing that I want you to see that you can do with just simple pulls is you can use it for a lot of different things. Okay, if all I have is four poles, I don't have to stop and reposition them. I can use it for several different things. So you can back through. Mitch's horse and I are having fun getting to know each other. about right now because we're not working on the perfect show mode right now. I just want you to kind of play around with what you can do with that. That makes sense? Okay. This one over here. that we set up for. This is an exercise to help you kind of understand how to slow your footfall down so they can keep theirs going. So you can be a person, you can also be a And you can trot it, you can walk it, you can use it for pull through, back through. So you can do all three maneuvers and all three obstacles. Okay? That makes sense? 